Hello everyone. This week we're going to be covering the absolute most basic portrait painting in my channel. I'm making this video specifically for those that are new to portrait painting. After applying a light wash of burnt umber diluted with paint thinner, I'll let it sit for a couple minutes until I actually paint on it. To start off with, I'll be using a little size 2 bristle brush and burnt umber to do my initial drawing. So I've got an indication for the top and bottom of the head and I've roughly drawn out the outside shape of the model's hair and now I'm starting to put in the boundaries for the width of the head. It's typically a good idea to start off with a general outside shape and build smaller shapes inside of it. And um, this isn't always the case. Sometimes you can start off with just the eyes and figure it out from there. But um, for an absolute beginner, I'd recommend spending some time drawing the outside shape with just straight lines and angles. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting in the axes of the center line of the face and the axes of the the eyes and the eye socket and I'm starting to put an indication of where the eyebrows are going and I'm going to be relating the distance of the eye socket to that of the nose and all of that in relation to the outside shape. It could be that your first instructors will tell you to get finite measurements uh, for the distance of the axis of the eyes to the axis of the nose and that of the mouth. Um, but for the absolute beginner, it's just my personal opinion that you should stay away from measuring until later points in your artistic development. I think it's important to train your eye to see these shapes. Notice how simple the, the shape is for the, the eye sockets, the nose and the mouth. What I'm doing is I'm using my eye to tell me what these distances are in relation to each other before I try to do any finite measuring. So I'll be using a little bit of burnt umber, alizarin crimson, some sap green, and some ivory black to cool it down to get the dark shape of the hair. Um, so I'm just going to mess in a flat dark shape for the hair. Um, this is just going to give me a, a good gauge for the future values to come. So for the absolute beginner, it's important to be able to simplify these shapes and um, really, really see things as simply as you can, but as accurately as you can too. I've mixed up a darker yet warmer flesh tone, it's kind of a, like a middle ground of which I'm going to be building my future values on, but I'm also going to be using this as an aid to my drawing. Uh, so the difference between this portrait demonstration and my usual ones is that in my usual ones I start to build up the planes first, but in this case to the absolute beginner I'd recommend to spend some time working on the drawing, that is the placements of the two eyes and the nose and the mouth to each other. Um, and so what I'm doing right now is I'm putting a, a finite mark on the eyebrows indicating the top of the eye socket. Now this isn't always the case, it depends on the model's eyebrows. If they have like their eyebrows halfway in their forehead or something then don't use that. But in this case, in this model's head, it's a very uh, a good place to look for the outside boundaries of the eye sockets. Um, so not to complicate things, I'm just placing the eyebrows and the eyes in the eye socket at this point. Um, I'm using very simple lines to indicate where things are going, but I'm trying to stand back and make sure that these lines relate to each other on a horizontal and a vertical axis. To the absolute beginner, I. I suggest that you stand back and stay at an arm's length away from your canvas. And I suggest that you stick with just two tones for the longest time possible. Just simple light and shadow. Try to set up 
a model or a pose in such a way that there aren't too many lights interfering and you just have a single light source of which you can gauge your light and shadow shapes. And try as much as you can to see curves in terms of straight lines and angles. You can build a bridge that will sit and stand in space if you can build that bridge based on accurate straight lines and angles. But if you try to build a bridge with just a generic curve, then you have no way to gauge the height or width or the vertex of the curve of that particular bridge. When we're learning how to paint or when we're painting in general, we want to have things as simple and understandable as possible so that if we may make a mistake in the future, we have a reference point of which to go back to. So now that I have the two eyes and the nose and the chin placed as accurately as I can place them just using my eyes, I will mix up a generic value scale of flesh tones on my palette and uh, I'll use this more of a gauge than a convention, I, meaning I'll use it just as a reference point for my values. I like seeing my values next to each other on the palette before I attempt to put them on my painting. When I start to, to do form modeling, I, I try to break it down into threes and then a lightest light and then a darkest dark on the end. Meaning I like to have a top plane, two side planes, and then a very light light and a very dark dark. And if I can establish these planes in relation to each other, finishing it is just a matter of finessing the edges of which these values meet each other. For the absolute beginner, I don't want you to think about your final result as much as how you're going to obtain that result. Try to have a good system or a good methodology to which you're going to be producing your paintings or producing your portrait paintings. Don't think so much about, oh, how rendered is this forehead going to be? How beautiful is that eyelid going to be? Think about keeping your orders keeping your steps in check and having a systematic approach that you yourself understand. I just want to tell you based on my experience and the people around me that when when doing a realist painting or a realistic portrait painting you really really want to have the strongest effect that you can in just two tones, just light and shadow. Um, because once you have your light and shadow in check, you can really spend as much as your time rendering the light without having to worry about, oh, is that eye a little bit left? Is it a little bit right? Um, so you can see how I've split the large shape of the, the head into just the top plane and then the side plane. Of course I've rendered the forehead a little bit, but you can see my clear division of the side plane of the face. Kind of like a sculptor would do if the sculptor was to sculpt out these forms on a piece of clay. And if there's any confusion on what I mean by planes, on planes of the face, I'm going to have as an addition to this video a little smaller video at, at the end where I will be illustrating the major planes of the face that I used in large form modeling. It's important to understand however that even though we're trying to make a three-dimensional image appear on a two-dimensional surface and even though we're trying to sculpt out these planes as if it were a sculpture and even though we want to make the most convincing or realistic image possible we really need to take into account the importance of the two-dimensionality and what I mean is that we really want to stand back once in a while and make sure that we don't lose our light and shadow we want 
our light to be completely different from our shadow. We don't want our darkest light to ever be as light as our lightest dark. To the beginner, I also would encourage the idea of trying to choose a trajectory in which you want your artwork to go. Um, what I mean is find an artist or a group of artists from the present or the past of whom you admire the most, that you admire their work the most and you want to paint the most like them. Now I don't mean to paint exactly like them, but try to embody what it is that they did with their paintings. In my case in particular, when I was coming up, I copied a lot of John Singer Sargent paintings and I just had a particular admiration for the way that he painted his portraits and I wanted to convey that sort of knowledge in my own work. Um, so when you find this artist that you want to paint like, it's okay to do as many copies as you can of their work because you can really learn what they did. For example, right now I'm painting with a fairly loaded brush, completely covered in paint, and I'm applying it kind of carelessly or fearlessly on the seemingly fully rendered surface, but I'm doing that in order to get an effect, a painterly effect that John Singer Sargent had on his portraits. And if you're watching this video as a beginner in portrait painting, I absolutely strongly recommend that you don't worry too much about the rendering or the finishing of a portrait. I want you to focus more on the basics, the light and shadow. And if you can just get the light and shadow and just a simple value gradation into the shadow, it really doesn't take much to finish a painting. If you're just starting out, spend some time learning how to block in just light and shadow. And once you have that done, then spend your time figuring out how to render and finish. But it's important to break these various factors down into different exercises so that when you paint you're able to keep track of your steps. So that concludes the portrait painting part of this video and now on to the second part of the video. So for this portion of the video I would like to explain to you from my knowledge the most basic planes of the face that I use in order to do large form modeling. So I will be working with my imagination for this little demonstration. So I will draw out the generic head for you and then I will paint in the basic planes of the face. And I think that I'll choose this light source to be a little bit above the um, the uh, hypothetical model's head. So you can think of the light on the nose and the light of the cheek that I just indicated here to be the top planes of their forms and then the areas across from them will be the side planes of the forms. So the area underneath the nose is the top of the mouth and it curves upwards towards the light a little bit more as the top of the forehead faces the light a little bit more than the side planes given that the light source I'm choosing is above the model's head. The cheekbones or the, um, the zygomatic bones are the areas uh, to the left of the ends, the left and the right of the ends of the eyes and um, I'm painting these uh, planes as flat and generic as possible. Now it's highly conceptualized, so you won't actually find models with this specific of plane divisions on their faces. The forehead I'm outlining, um, I'm outlining the frontal eminence of the front of the skull, so that round portion of the front of the skull and to the side of that is the side planes of that and the little curved forms directly above the eyebrows are the are also skeletal structures as you'll see this more in some people and less in others 
um, but it's an important plane to, to note. The, the glabella is the area in between the two eye sockets and it is a plane that is curving in towards the eye sockets and then it curves outwards with the nasal bone. So it is in itself a plane that faces usually away from the light if the light is above the model. And in the inside corners of the, the eyes, we have the tear ducts. So the areas where your tears go across your eyes when you're not feeling too well. Um, so these planes typically will be receiving uh, an, a good amount of light if the light is facing the top. Notice I just drew those highlights in, sweeping into the, the eyes. So now I'm drawing out the curve of the zygomatic arch known as the cheekbone and this division will give you a clear division between the top plane of the face and the two side planes of the face and I'm curving it in the direction of which the zygomatic bone would be traveling. Directly below the cheekbone will be an area that will curve very subtly towards the light. So as you travel across the face um, from the top plane of the face into the, the side plane, you have the zygomatic bone as I just uh, illustrated there. And as you travel further closer to the jawbone, it will curve out very subtly. Um, and so now I'm drawing in some basic indications of the muzzle structure of the mouth known as the orbicularis oris. Once I'm done illustrating the structures for the outside shape and the bottom shapes of the mouth, feel free to pause this video and study the structures that I've outlined for you as they're very useful for me in my own paintings. That concludes this week's portrait painting demonstration and the demonstration for the planes of the face. Stay tuned for more weekly videos and thanks for watching.